Knock It. And Anne is going to be um, speaking with us about Katahdin Lake, which I was really excited when Anne picked that topic. It's a place that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I know it's probably near and dear to, to many of your, um, of your hearts as well. Um, and Anne um, just did a, a fabulous job diving into Katahdin Lake from a lot of, uh, a lot of angles. So um, take it away, Anne. All right. Uh, let me get my screen sharing going here. Okay. All right. So, uh, as Ms. McGuire said, my name is Ann Shearer, and I'm from Millinocket, Maine. I just graduated high school this year, and I'll be heading to college um, actually this weekend. And this is a great uh, opportunity. I've loved this job. I've loved working on the crew last year. And uh, I'm just really grateful for this opportunity. And my presentation is taking a while to load here. Um, but as Squire mentioned, I did my project on Facade and Lake, which was really interesting. I got to talk to people who work there and who run Katahdin and Lake Wilderness Camps which was great, and I got to hike out there a lot. I stayed in a lean for a night with my dad and got to that area as well. And yeah, great, and I can't tell you about it as soon as this will go. All right, I think I should probably just go ahead and start talking while I'm waiting for these pictures to show up. Um, all right, so I wanted to start at the beginning of the history of Katahdin Lake. There's no evidence of Native American use of Katahdin Lake, um, but it is assumed that Native Americans would have traveled from the Wasatauquic stream uh, up Katahdin Brook, which flows from Katahdin Lake to the Wasatauquic. Uh, and then would have fished in Katahdin Lake, which is known for having a great plethora of brook trout. Um, Katahdin Lake really began to have visitors act a really hunt established hunt farm on the east branch of the Penobscot River, which is now in the National Monument. Um, hunt built farm to house loggers, but it also attracted um, sports people who wanted to climb to Katahdin, excuse me, or hunt um, fish and just explore the woods. Hunt Farm became the ideal jumping off place, so to speak, where people would stay before venturing into the wilderness. Uh, the Reverend Marcus Keep was one such explorer who became very familiar with the area. He built a small cabin on Katahdin Brook, and he cut the official, first official mark trail to Katahdin um, and guided many people on hikes up to the mountain. Um, as a reward for his efforts in um, improving access to the area, the state of Maine granted him a lot of lands on the lake where he already built his cabin. Let's see, I really got my presentation to show up here. I'm not sure what's wrong. I'm sorry, everyone. Sorry, Anne. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. First slide wouldn't show, second slide is here. Okay, so. <laughs> As I said, the and people travel over to the lands of the bridge, which is for the Reverend Marcus Hugh. Um, a notable Katahdin Lake was Teddy Roosevelt. He used the lake with his father as a boy again in 1879 after his father's death. Uh, his adventures in the North Main Woods played a big role in strengthening his health, which had always been weak. Um, restoring his disposition after his father died, he really um, suffered from that. And also influenced his conservationist as president of the West. Um, when on Todd and Lake, it brought up in 1870 and 1880. Um, his establishers, Mr. Lang and Mr. Jones, had intended it as a place for people to stay while hiking a trail they had cut to the Great Basin. Um, however, 
not be arrested the truth he was caught in. Um, Jones didn't laugh. And um, another scandal, just east of it, not long after its closing, John F. Cushman and Madison M. Trace established was now the Todd in the Wilderness Camp on the South Shore property. The Todd in the Wilderness Camps, as I said, was established by uh, Mr. Cushman and Tracy in 1885. Tracy eventually sold the camp to Cushman, and the camps also passed through the hands of Spear and Ralph Bohr. And then in 1925, it became a private fishing club. Um, however, they remained available for public use when the owners were absent, so people were still able to use them. Um, Oliver and Bella Cobb offered the camps so were private, and then we opened them as public. In 1931, when in 1965, Clarence and Glenn and Joseph Stevens bought the camps and took over. Then again, five years after that, um, Alan and Susan Cooper bought the camps. The Coopers ran the camps from 1976 until 2006. And then after Todden Lake and its surrounding area became a part of Baxter State Park, Holly Hamilton ran them until they closed in 2017. I have apologized. My slides have just not show up. I don't know what's wrong. Um, so the current wilderness camp consists of roughly a dozen buildings, uh, including cabins for guests to stay in. There's a dining hall, houses, and even a sauna. Um, each set of the owners has added improvements and their own touch to the camps over the years. I had the privilege of speaking with um, Alan Susan Cooper and Holly Hamilton, who operated the camps for a number of years. Uh, their love for the place was clearly evident, and they both they all said that they received a lot of joy. Um, from the clients, they had to work very hard to keep the camps going. Um, it's very easy for them. Um, they said that they enjoyed the diversity. vacation of running the camps as opposed to a more typical job. There was never um, made a lot of meals for the camps with a meal plan. Um, if you go to the Katahdin Lake Wilderness Camps Facebook page, you can just see the pictures of the happy guests and the mouth-watering food. Uh, Mrs. Hamilton, the camps under Mrs. Hamilton's man. management also worked were awarded the Yankee Magazine Best of Maine. The isolation of the camp presented a top guest, but it also made it difficult to provide for guests to bring supplies in and out. The Coopers and Hamiltons used full planes and snowmobiles when they could. Uh, in the winter, they would snowmobile from the lake all the way to Abel Bridge, where they parked their cars and then would drive on the Golden Road into town. Uh, the Coopers told me a fun story. Their son, oldest son, Alfie, was on the cross-country ski team at school, and he would ski while they would snowmobile, and he would beat them every time. He would beat the snowmobile. Uh, after Katahdin rode southeast of the camps to move things in and out, um, and after a few years, their only access was via the Katahdin Lake Trail, which goes off of the Roaring Brook Road in the park. Oh, hey, there's one picture. <laughs> Um, and whenever they could, the uh, camp operators would grow their own food and have their own supplies. Uh, they showed a great love for the lake. As I said, they loved watching the guests come and you could just see them relax and unwind. And everyone loved how the lake is so off the grid and that's something that's really special because it's rare in today's world. Uh, Katahdin Lake Wilderness Camps is offered a wide range of memories and feelings to all who have visited it. Uh, for guests, it introduced them to a unique wilderness experience, which, as I said, is rare in today's world. Um, and to those who lived there, the lake just felt like home to them, and they really loved it. Uh, Katahdin Lake Wilderness Camps, 17, the cabins are still there and still stocked with all their furniture and appliances. And as of yet, there's no public plan to reopen the camps or to preserve them.
And to summarize, Katahdin Lake Wilderness Camps was run by eight couples over the course of 132 years and was enjoyed by countless guests and explorers who came to visit. While the camps were owned by different people, the land itself was owned by different logging companies and land companies who granted the camp owners a lease to operate the camps. This here in the bottom left, these are some trees on the southeast parcel of land that you can see the boundary markers here. And then this on the right is a post I found. See here, it says GP or Great Northern Paper. And actually on the back of this post, it says Cooper lease on, which is, would be for the Coopers. All right, Baxter, Percival Baxter and other political figures visited Katahdin Lake in 1920 as part of an expedition to climb Katahdin. Uh, Baxter saw Katahdin Lake as a vital part of Baxter State Park, but he was unable to ever acquire the land. In 2006, however, the Trust for Public Lands and the Maine Department of Conservation negotiated the purchase of Katahdin, of the Katahdin Lake parcel from the Gardner Lands Company and donated the parcel to Baxter State Park. Uh, the fundraising for this was um, a very grassroots fundraiser. Um, I know Friends of Baxter helped a lot with it, as did many other people. There was a lot of controversy surrounding the tr transition of the land to the park because of the loss of traditional historic uses, such as hunting, snowmobiling, and so on. However, one thing that stood out to me was that um, despite the controversy surrounding how to preserve the land, the great majority of people did want to see it preserved in some way which I think is a testimony to how valuable and meaningful the lake is to so many people. Katahdin Lake has also seen many, many artists visit who were inspired. Uh, Frederick Church, who visited in the mid 1800s was likely the most famous. He did a famous painting of Katahdin. Um, another great artist who was inspired by Katahdin Lake was Marsden Hartley, who is also now recognized as one of Maine's greatest artists. James Fitzgerald was another prominent artist who stayed at Katahdin Lake Wilderness Camps. Um, according to Susan Cooper, artists were always coming in a steady, continuous stream to Katahdin Lake. Of course, the lake also has a variety of wildlife. Um, I unfortunately didn't see anything more exciting than this frog and this snake, as well as a moose, which I was not able to get a picture of, unfortunately. Um, but there are deer, there's moose, loons, brook trout, everything. I asked Mrs. Hamilton what animals were out there and she just said there's everything out there. And hiking, Katahdin Lake, um, the Katahdin Lake parcel has the Katahdin Lake Trail going to the south end of Katahdin Lake, as well as the North Katahdin Lake Trail, which goes to the north end of the lake. And there's a Martin Pond Trail, which also goes on a little loop to the west and goes by the Martin Ponds. I was able to hike all these trails um, as part of this job, which was a great experience. You can see here in this picture to the left, this is some old corduroy road um, that the camp operators put down um, to help with horses and pack animals who didn't really like to step in the mud. And now of course the park has put down bog bridging to help this all grow back over. This is a view of Katahdin from one of the Martin Ponds. It was an absolutely beautiful view. Um, I highly recommend any and everyone go out there. It's not a hard hike. It's pretty much all flat and it's not terribly long either. And it is absolutely stunning. There are also uh, here is the Martin Ponds lean to which is right next to that beautiful view I just showed you. Uh, upper right here, this is the North Katahdin Lake Lean 2, and down here we have the South Katahdin Lake Lean 2. And we've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you everyone so much for your time, and thank you for everyone who helped me with this project, with research, and with letting me interview them. And if anyone else wants to hear more about my project, I'll be releasing the finished project later this week, and I'm sure Mr. McGuire can get that to you. So thank you. Thanks so much, Anne. Fantastic. Um, and way to go pushing through the uh, tech issues. Uh, there's, it wouldn't be a Zoom meeting if there weren't, if there weren't internet and tech issues. It's, yeah. uh, 
Yeah, great, great job. Um, so, anybody have any questions about um, about Katahdin Lake? Anne covered a lot of ground. Um, did a lot of hiking. Did a lot of exploring over there. Um, did some great interviews with Coopers and and Holly Hamilton. And um, yeah, um, there's a lot. There's a lot there. Um, cultural, ecological. Um, lot, she covered a lot of ground. So, anybody have any questions for Anne? You can raise your real hand or you can wave at me or you can raise your virtual hand yeah all right sylvia you gotta unmute yourself and then good to go okay um so me and my sister were wondering why the town lake camp shut down i'm pretty sure you mentioned something about it to me privately um that they've been shut down for a few years now mm -hmm. they shut down in 2017 um, and that had to do with the man who actually owned the camps. The Hamiltons ran the camps for Charles Fitzgerald, and I believe the um, decision to shut them down was his. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Barb, if you hit your space bar. Were you able to, um, were you able to spend a night there? Yes, uh, my dad and I spent a Friday night at the South Katahdin Lake Lean Two which was a great experience. Oh, good, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Right. Any, other, any other questions? So there's a, uh, folks who have your video turned off, um, there's about 20 of you. Um, if you didn't catch it when I was saying before, if you go down to participants, um, click the participants tab at the bottom, then you'll see the little icon to raise your hand. And um, if you don't have your video on, that's uh, that's the way you can get my attention, um, and I can uh, I can know you want to ask a question that way. All right. So, Anne, did you get out on the water at Katahdin Lake at all? I know you had one day that was really windy, but did you get out on the? Mm -hmm. oh, yep. Uh, I went canoeing with my dad. And that was actually when we saw the moose. And of course, we hadn't thought, thought to bring our cameras in the canoe. We actually um, went to the far side of Katahdin Brook and followed an old trail there out to Rocky Pond, which is where we saw the moose. And from what Mrs. Cooper told me, that's a great place to see moose. So we were really excited to see one, a mother moose in her calf. Nice. Oh, that's fantastic. Great. Other questions? Yeah. I think the best view of the of Katahdin is from the lake so that the trees aren't in the way. Yeah, absolutely. Sylvia, did you have another question? I do. Um, uh, did you go swimming? I did. Uh, the place I went swimming was a little reedy, so it wasn't great. Katahdin Lake isn't that deep either. I think the deepest it is gets to 28 feet. So you got to kind of walk out a ways to get into deep water, but it doesn't get cold either. They're not okay. very cold at least because it's pretty shallow, but yes, yeah. I did get the chance to go swimming. Cool. <laughs> Great. All right. Any other questions for Anne? Oops, sorry. Sarah, is that you? Yeah. Okay. Just hit your space bar. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, I may not have heard it because it was the the audio was a little choppy, but um, did you cover um, the wildlife or the fish? In, uh, is there anything unique about the fish or wildlife in, in the Katahdin Lake area? Yeah, I think the biggest thing about wildlife is just how much of it there is. When I was hiking, there were moose prints everywhere around the lake. Uh, I did not do any fishing myself, but. Katahdin Lake is known for its brook trout. Um, if you go onto Facebook and look at the Katahdin Lake Wilderness Camp's Facebook page, you can see huge brook trout that people have caught. Um, and that's really what it's known for. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought so, but I didn't, I didn't yeah. catch it. Barb? There are also bear. Um, I don't know if you noticed apple trees near the camps. Mm -hmm. But every um, fall, the bear just take over the apple orchard, and you just can't miss them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should also have mentioned at every lean-to, there is a, um, I don't know the te technical term for it, but there is um, a thing to string up your food so that you won't be attracting bears. Yeah, yeah, a bear line. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, 
the squirrels have figured that out and they wait there for everyone to hang their food. <laughs> the bears can't get it though. Yeah. Great, thanks so much, Anne. Anybody have any, any final questions for Anne about Katahdin Lake? All right, thanks so much. Yeah. Al. Yes, uh, were there many uh, people hiking this summer in, uh, around Katahdin Lake and uh, yeah, yeah, there were a few. Um, the lean-tos were all reserved. My dad and I were just lucky to be able to get even one night. Um, I saw people almost every time I was out there, but not a lot of people at all. Great. Um, and um, while we're talking about um, that area, do you want to, um, can you just talk a little bit about access and the bridge situation um, that you encountered yeah. on the way in? Yes. So the bridge, the trail to Katahdin Lake crosses um, one brook that I researched but couldn't find a name for. Um, and then it crosses Sandy Stream, actually right where Boren Brook and Sandy Stream run together, which is really pretty. Um, unfortunately, the bridge there is out. But hiking there a lot, I figured out if you're on the trail and you go to the left, there's a place you can rock hop across. Um, I, there are materials out there to build a bridge, but I'm not really sure what the park's timeline for getting a bridge up there is. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard later later this season is the most recent thing I've heard. But yeah, um, it is. Uh, a few people have been surprised that it's a it's either a rock hop or a ford. Um, the water's low enough now that it's. Not not too too hard to get across, but back in the spring it was a different situation. So, yep. Thanks, thanks, Anne. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, um, thank you so much. Um, and let's move on to our second presentation.